This video is going to show you how to upload files to any web server, uh, but most specifically the Hagerstown Community College web servers, using the integrated FTP functions that Dreamweaver has. First off, FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. And it's not very creatively named because it's used for transferring files around the internet. For doing FTP, you need three pieces of information. You need the address of where you need to send the information to. Typically, this is just the web address of where your, your site is located. But you also need a username and a password. Most of this is set up on the back-end administration of any uh, website. The software we're going to use, of course, is Dreamweaver, but I want you to be aware that there's a free program called FileZilla that only does FTP. It does a lot of things Dreamweaver doesn't do, like permissions, which is really important with server-side languages like PHP but it doesn't have any of Dreamweaver's uh, integrated editing capabilities. So uh, all it really does is move files around. It's not a replacement for Dreamweaver in any sense of the word, but it uh, has a lot of useful features. So a lot of web developers keep FileZilla around, uh, even if they already have Dreamweaver. And there's a link. You can find it at FileZilla-project.org. So. To demonstrate how to set up and run FTP with Dreamweaver, I've got a nice little dummy website on my desktop in this folder. It's got a little index, I've got an images folder, and I'll show you how to not put up a work folder. In Dreamweaver, I've got to set up a site. I'm going to go to Site, New Site. I'm going to call my site Upload, and under Local Site Folder, I'm going to go browse for this folder. It's on my desktop. There it is, Upload. I'll open it and select. Now, in order to do the FTP, that information is added under Servers. So click Servers and click the plus button to add a new server. The server name is doesn't really matter too much, but I'll call it Upload again. We're going to connect using FTP, and you can see there are other inf uh, options here. For the most part, 90% of the time, you're probably going to use FTP. The FTP address is going to be hcc webhead Net. Now, if you're in the Hagerstown Community College web design program, it's either HCC or HCC2. You will have been provided that information in, your, uh, in an email that you receive from the instructor. Your username will be provided for you. Uh, for this one, it's going to be jsmithtest, and I'm not going to tell you what the password is. You should know that for your account. But anyway, you're going to enter in your information here and your specific password. Now at this point it's important to test this information because if you have any of this wrong, it's easier to correct it now. It usually does take a few moments, but if you see Dreamweaver connected to your web server successfully, click OK, everything's good. If you don't see that, you probably got one of two possible errors. One is if you didn't spell the website correctly and you click test. The Dreamweaver is going to take a while and it's going to find that the remote host could not be found. If you see that one, your website spelled incorrectly. If, however, you misspell your username or password, the error that you're going to get is going to be a little bit different. An FTP error occurred, cannot make connection to host, your login or password is incorrect. Those are the two most common errors that you're going to see, and I think they're fairly self-explanatory if you read them. They should help you figure out what's wrong with uh, your site. Now, the only thing I want to mention is that some web servers require that you use passive FTP. Some of them require that you not use it. Um, if you know you've got everything in correctly, usually checking or unchecking this box will give you uh, access to your site. So just be aware there's a few more th advanced things under more options. For the most part, if you leave it alone, uh, it's going to work all, all, most of the time. So I'm going to click Save. I'm going to click Save again. And I've got my site set up. Now, the problem here is that all we've done is made Dreamweaver aware of the FTP connection. It hasn't actually moved our files over yet. Here's how you do that. In the Files panel, there's a button on the left, upper left, called Connect to Remote Server. It looks like two plugs plugging into each other. When you click that, if your test information was successful, you should get a little tiny green light in the lower left of that button. Now your web server and Dreamweaver are connected to each other. It still moved anything, 
To do the moving, you have to go here, expand to show local and remote sites. It's the button on the far right of the files panel. Now, what we've got here is on the right are all the files that make up your site. On the left is the web server. Because there's nothing in it right now, if you were to go to the web server, you would get uh, a 404 error. And I actually have that set up for you. This is the address, hcc-webhead.net. And the way I have it set up is that everybody has their own folder on the account. So when you log in, you go to a folder with your name on it. So here's J. Smith Test. There's nothing in that folder, so we get GoDaddy's pretty standard 404 page not found error. You've seen this probably a thousand times before. You're going to get that until we put something in the folder. Now, there are a couple of ways to move files over. First one, you can simply click and drag. You have to drag it on top of the little folder icon. It doesn't just go anywhere in there. If I go to my page here now, and I refresh it, haha, -ha, something's showing up. Now, I didn't move any of the images over, so they're not working just yet. So I want to show you something called Synchronize. To use this option, you have to have the top folder selected on, on your local files. And this is the Synchronize button. It's a button that looks like a green and a blue arrow in a circle. What this button will do is it can take the entire site or just a few um, files that you have selected, and it will compare them locally to what's on the server. Whatever you've saved, those are the files that, whatever files that you've changed, those are the files that it will upload to the server. The ones that you haven't made any changes to, there's no reason to re-upload them with an identical file. So this is really nice, but the problem is that if you set this up the way that I typically make you set it up, is that you might have a work folder. Now a work folder, if you don't use one of these, you might want to consider doing it, but what I do is any file that is not part of the website, but that I need in order to make the website. For example, I've got a lot of Photoshop files in here, and some text files, and an original high resolution JPEG file, which is really, really big. But I've made all the files that I need in my images. There's nothing in my HTML that it references anything in the work folder. Typically, this is stuff that clients send me. Um, photographs, Word documents, emails, things like that, that I might need to copy text out of, but don't go in the website. This, before I hit this synchronize process, you can actually prevent this work folder from being, um, from being synchronized. If you right click on it, there's an option called cloaking and under there is an option called cloak. Now what you'll see is that a little red slash goes through here and what that means is now when you do synchronize it will not include the work folder so that will not get uploaded to the server. Okay so now we've cloaked out any folders or files that you don't want to actually add up on the server. When you synchronize I usually suggest you synchronize the entire site and you typically want to put newer files onto the remote server. You can do the reverse and sort of a, a, a both at once synchronization, but I'm not going to worry about those just yet. You can also tell it to get rid of stuff that's on the server that you might have deleted locally. That can be dangerous. Um, so once you have these settings in there, click preview. It's not actually going to do it yet. It's going to let you know what it's going to upload. And you can see that I haven't uploaded the images folder yet, so that's what it's going to put on the server. Click OK. And after a few seconds, you'll see that I have my images folder on the left-hand side. And now, if I look at my site and I refresh it, everything, oh, almost everything works. I've actually put an error in this HTML file so that you can see how something goes wrong. This image right here is not showing up. But in Dreamweaver, if I get out of this expanded mode and open up my index.html, Look at that, it's there. Hmm, it works in Dreamweaver, but it doesn't work on the site. This is a very common problem, and it's as simple as capitalization. Let me show you. The images folder that I've named has a lowercase i, but if you go into the code view, you'll see that in my SRC for this image, I have an uppercase i. This is bad. The reason is that most web servers, uh, especially Linux web servers, 
are case sensitive. So if the capitalization doesn't match, it doesn't show up. However, Windows and Mac computers are not case sensitive. So if you're developing this on a Windows machine, you're going to be able to get away with making that mistake, but when you upload to the server, it's going to slap your hand and your, then your images are going to break. The fix is simply to make the change, capitalization, change that to a lowercase i, I'll save this, and then I'm going to go back to my expanded view, and I can click on my top folder, resynchronize my entire site, and when I preview it, the only thing that I've changed is my index file. Click OK. That gets ported over to the, moved over to the site, and when I refresh this page, my image shows up. The other big capitalization I see a lot is with the index.html file itself. And this has to do with the fact that most web servers want index.html to be lowercase. If you uh, and a lot of people are trained to to create their file names with a capital first letter. Um, Word is the biggest example of that. Um, and when you're dealing with Word documents, that's okay. But on the web, typically everything should be lowercase. And I know I didn't do that in every example here. But index.html absolutely has to be lowercase. If it's a capital I, it's not going to show up. You're still going to get a 404 error. Um, what I recommend in that situation is that you delete everything off the left hand side, rename files locally, and update all of the links. So let me show you how to do that real quick. If you need to delete stuff, you can simply go to the left and click the delete key. I know you can't see that, but I just hit the regular plain old delete button and things go away. Let me do it one more time. Haha. -ha. And if I go back and refresh this page, everything's gone. What I would then do here is hit F2 and start renaming my files, make sure the indexes are, are named properly, all the capitalization is correct. Then if Dreamweaver will usually update those links, but if it doesn't, you're still going to be responsible for, for finding every reference to uppercase INDEX and changing it to lowercase INDEX. It's a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it's not as bad as it could be. Once you're done with that again, I'll resynchronize, preview it, upload everything. And I figure I'll show you the details. That usually lasts for a split second. And all my stuff is back up. There's my page again. So that is FTP with Dreamweaver CS6.